Welcome aboard a true spectacle of the seas, the Lean 56 Trimaran. In this video, I'll guide you through an exclusive tour of this unique vessel, where innovative design meets distinctive comfort and capability. Every inch of the Lean 56 promises a journey beyond the ordinary, from its spacious decks to the cutting edge technology on board. So join me as we explore what makes this trimaran not just a boat, but a transformative experience on the water. Before I take you around this incredible boat, please don't forget to give the video a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's see how quickly we can get to 100,000 subscribers. Let's start this boat tour by boarding on the starboard side as we enter the spacious cockpit. We'll talk about this area in a bit more detail later on in the video. But first, let's head up to the bow via the spacious starboard side deck. You'll notice an abundance of skylights artfully integrated into the design. These are not just aesthetic features, but crucial in bathing the living areas in natural light. We'll delve deeper into this interplay of light and space as we continue our tour, revealing how the skylights transform the ambience inside the Lean 56. On the bow is a raised area that gives additional headroom below deck and can also be used as a seating area. Again, note the skylights which can be opened to allow lots of fresh air into the living areas. As we reach the bow and turn aft, we'll get a good view of the wheelhouse and the hardtop on the flybridge. I like the narrow stanchions on the windows to the wheelhouse as it means that you get a great all-round view when you're at the helm. On the bow, the automatic anchor collects the chain in a large locker below the deck. This setup allows for convenient storage of the chain, as well as additional items like fenders and various tools. The anchoring process itself can be observed from the flybridge and of course the wheelhouse, thanks to those large windows overlooking the foredeck. As we head back towards the stern via the port side deck, it's worth mentioning that the upper deck of the Lean 56 offers an impressive surface area, more than 34 square meters, which is equivalent to the flybridge of a monohull of more than 62 feet. This upper deck is also incredibly safe. I'd feel more than happy walking around up here whilst out at sea, even when the conditions are a little bit gnarly. We're gonna head up to the flybridge now, but I wanna talk about another standout feature of the Lean 56, it's Liberty Kite a 40 square meter wing specifically designed for blue water cruising. This innovative addition significantly reduces fuel consumption and provides an alternative propulsion solution which is particularly useful in emergencies. You can just imagine the sheer joy of turning off the engine and harnessing the wind with the Liberty Kite. It's not just a tool, it's an enhancement to the boating experience blending sustainability with the thrill of wind-powered navigation. But what do you think about this interesting feature? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's head up onto the vast flybridge. As we ascend the starboard staircase to the flybridge, we're welcomed into a world of leisure and relaxation. Over on the port side is a spacious seating area with freestanding furniture offering a perfect spot for social gatherings or simply taking in the panoramic views. Panning aft, we find ample space on the rear of the flybridge. Above us, the radar arch stands proudly equipped with state-of-the-art Simrad radar, GPS and communications aerials, symbolizing the Lean 56 commitment to safety and of course, modern navigation. Now let's turn our attention to the helm station, which is on the starboard side. Here we find seating for two, which offers companionship for the captain, while the dashboard boasts a sleek single control throttle lever for the vessel's engine. If I owned this boat, then I'd probably want another multifunction display on the dash. As we pan aft, observe the flybridge's full expanse from forward to aft, enclosed by sturdy handrails for safety. In total, there's around 34 square meters of space up here to play with, so you really can make this area your own, depending on your cruising requirements. Under the steps of the flybridge is a heated wardrobe for jackets, fowlies, sea boots, or diving suits. Remember, if you need any additional gear for your boats, then be sure to check out my nautical stores on Amazon. You'll find the relevant links in the video description. 
Now, some of you may have noticed this as I boarded the boat, but over here on the port side, under the seating, is this very important safety feature. As we enter the saloon on the port side is this comfortable seating area that has been set up for four guests. But you could easily fit more people around this table if you wanted to. The fact that this area is also right next to the huge sliding doors which lead out onto the cockpit also means that when you're sitting here enjoying your meal you can still feel connected to the exterior of the vessel. So that if it's raining you can still enjoy some alfresco style dining. How is this for an entertainment space? Got a huge TV on the bulkhead there. Hell shaped seating over here on the port side so you can enjoy the view whilst at the same time enjoying a nice meal and a drink with your family and friends. In here obviously as well we've got huge windows in the saloon. A little opening there so you can get some fresh air coming through this space as well. And moving forward on the port side we have the galley. Well equipped galley, really functional and a massive window here so you can look at what is happening whilst you're on the way without causing too much of a uh, disturbance uh, to the captain. I must admit from a personal perspective I really like the open plan living of this galley and the way that it seamlessly interacts with the main saloon plus also the fact that you can get easy access into the wheelhouse. Now I know many of you like me to open up some of these so here we have a dishwasher very big dishwasher as well and over here great refrigeration space obviously lots of water in there at the moment but I'm sure whilst you're on the way or when you're at anchor you probably fill that up with some of your favorite bottles of wine or whatever it is that is your favorite tipple over here on the starboard side of the saloon is a cabinet with some electrical distribution and isolation switches allowing you to control the lights and electronics and some other comfort related features on board. There is also a distribution box for the 230 volt systems on board. Moving forward we arrive in the wheelhouse with the helm controls located on the starboard side. We'll take a closer look at the helm station later on in the video, so make sure you stay tuned. Over here on the port side is an L-shaped seating area, so guests can get a captain's eye view of what is happening. Let's check out the accommodation on board, starting with the double cabin that is located in the port float. As we enter this space and turn right so that we are facing forward, we find a bright wet head with plenty of headroom. A sliding door can seal off the wet head and there's a sink located just outside the sliding door. Here's a quick salute for any fellow veterans who might be watching this video. Now let's spin around and head back into this double berth cabin. There's that skylight that we saw earlier on when I was taking you around the upper deck. Obviously allowing lots of natural light into this space, especially with this uh, porthole here. And obviously you've got a vent that you can open up as well if you want some fresh air. As you can see, there's plenty of storage space in this double cabin, conveniently located right next to the bed, as well as ample hanging locker storage space for guests who are lucky enough to join you on your nautical adventures. If you owned this boat, where would you head to and why? Let me know in the comments below. The Amalfi Coast would be my first port of call if this was my boat. If you want to as well for some additional privacy, you can actually close this. I won't do it now, but yeah, you can pull this across uh, and close that area off. Let's head over into the owner's suite. And one of the features that I really love about this area is the fact that it's split over two levels. Here we have the island bed, so you can easily walk around it with its storage space underneath. But this area also comes with an office. I absolutely love this cabin here. What a great place to sit down and catch up with some emails or do some work or maybe watch your favorite yacht tuber on YouTube. But yeah, check out that view. And I'm really lucky because it has just started bucketing down outside. And here I am in this absolutely beautiful boat. So I might make this part of the tour last a little bit longer of course, just in the name of avoiding the rain. 
I really like this uh, use of indirect lighting that runs all around the overhead here. Creates a really, really nice feel in this particular space as well. As we head down into the porthole of this motor trimaran, we find the owner's bathroom as well as the toilet. The layout down here is extremely functional with lots of storage space. We have a his and her sink here as well with additional storage space under the sinks. And as we move forward, this is where we find the toilet. Of course, if you want to, then this toilet can be closed off from the rest of the bathroom so that your partner can use the shower. Of course, lots of headroom down here. My regular subscribers are probably bored of me saying it, but I'm six foot four. And look, there's plenty of space above my head down here. So if you're tall, you're not gonna be banging your head as you make your way around this beautiful bow. As we head back into the shower, we're past another porthole that can be opened for additional ventilation. Let's go and check out the owner's shower. There's plenty of space in here, and up here, of course, is another skylight that can be opened up to allow additional ventilation into the space. There's also a handy sink here as well. When it comes to fresh water capacity, the boat has enough for 263 US gallons. A full load displacement comes in at around 38.2 metric tons. I like as well the fact you can walk around this bed. I think it's nice touches like this that really help to create that sense of an open space. Now we've finished having a look around the large owner's suite spread across two decks. Let's go and check out the helm station. By the way, if you're thinking about planning your own nautical adventure, be sure to check out Ian McNeil's book, Circumnavigation and Ocean Passage Making. This really is a fantastic book and it gives lots of useful insights for anybody who's thinking about going blue water cruising. You'll find a link with a discount code in the video description. I love the traditional wheel one here as well. Obviously over here you have the throttle control levers. The Dockmate remote control as well. Uh, controls your windshield wiper, defogging, central wiper, starboard wiper, foghorn, Simrad comms, and a Simrad multifunction display over here. Control for the Onan generator and the fusion control for your entertainment system. But also check out that view when you're at the helm, thanks to the size of these huge windows. And there's great fresh air coming through here as well. Obviously you've got the starboard access out onto the main deck, uh, over on the pool side, L-shaped seating area. So your friends and family can sit and relax uh, watching you do your thing at the helm. Uh, we're opening here on the pool side, which again allows lots of fresh air into this space which is also an entertainment space as well so that's the one you wanted to i love these speakers really great positioning i can imagine playing some of your favorite music here whilst you're underway before we go and take a look at the engine room let's go and check out the third and final cabin which is a double cabin reserved for guests at the moment the LED lights in this space are turned off but even on a very cloudy and wet day like it is today the windows allow lots of natural light into the space. Here we just turn the overhead lights on so you can get a better view of what it looks like in here. It's such a great view from bed level here as well. Again we've got another opening here so allow lots of fresh air in but imagine waking up and checking out this view whilst you're a tanker or when you're alongside. But yeah, lots of fresh air coming through here. Again, lots of headroom. The skylight's up here. As you can see, it's absolutely bucketing it down outside. So I'm definitely in the right place. Some storage over here on the port side. I'll take it down below. You have to see a quick look at that engine room, which we'll check out in a bit more detail in a minute. This boat was actually designed by Bernard Nivelt and the architecture and interior design is by Pierre Frucci. Apologies for the pronunciation. Look, another opening here, again, allowing lots of fresh air into the accommodation areas. 
Here is where we find the toilet for this guest cabin. Again, lots of headroom and yet another porthole for natural light and ventilation. And here is a separate enclosed power shower. Remember, this boat has a beam of 27.1 feet. So you've got lots of volume in here. And when you walk around, you can really see how the designers have used the volume to maximize the overall space and living areas. Before we get into the main engine room, we find ourselves in a technical locker that houses things such as the lithium batteries, generator, water maker, and air conditioning units, as well as pressurized pumps, all of which is meticulously organized for optimal performance and of course, accessibility. As you can see, getting access to all of the boat's essential components is a breeze thanks to the way everything has been laid out. As we venture into the engine room of the Lean 56, we're greeted by the heart of this vessel, a 305 horsepower Cummins QSB6 engine. This powerhouse ensures robust performance and is also a marvel of efficiency. The boat has a fuel tank capacity of approximately 924.6 US gallons, which is about 3,500 litres. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Neil Trimorans for allowing me onto their stunning vessel to shoot this footage. If you want to find out more about this boat, then make sure you click on the link in the video description. And remember, if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then don't hesitate to get in contact with me. I'll leave some of my contact details on the screen now, but also you can find my contact details in the video description. And if you'd like to know what I'm up to in between shooting, and be sure to come and find me on Instagram. I'll leave a link for my Instagram account in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. As always, I'd like to say a big thank you to my channel members for helping to support my YouTube channel. Think of YouTube's channel membership as their version of Patreon. If you want to find out more, then I'll leave a link in the video description.